keeping your head safe is super important. And there's so many different options when it comes to full face helmets that we thought we'd do a video here on some of what we believe are the top full face helmets for 2023. So we're gonna get into some of these, we're gonna compare them, we're gonna break them down into specific categories and everything else. So let's dive right into there and we're gonna start with your full downhill helmet. All right, so let's get into downhill helmets first. These are generally gonna offer more protection. Uh, the more coverage is gonna mean that there's a little less ventilation and there's gonna be more padding in there. So there is kind of a sacrifice when you come into more protection that you're just gonna have a little bit less ventilation. It's gonna come at a little bit heavier weight, but each of these helmets have different details that we need to go over, so let's get into it. Yeah, so let's talk about, you know, the Bell helmets first. And, mm -hmm. you know, I picked this because I know that you ride a Bell helmet. That was your choice when it came to a downhill helmet. Um, and so we brought in both the full nine and the full 10. Um, you're currently riding the full nine. Mm -hmm. So why don't we start with, you know, the Bell full nine here. Uh, tell us a little bit why, you know, why did you pick the full nine when there's such a, you know, varied line of different, you know, full downhill helmets here. Um, and what do you like about it? What do you dislike? And then maybe we'll get into, you know, the full 10 and maybe what are some of the upgrades they've done? Yeah, yeah, I really like the full nine. Um, it's been around for quite a while and it's a proven helmet. Uh, Bell originally based this helmet off of their Moto helmet. So it's, it's a really protective design. And that's one of the reasons that I chose it is because it just has a lot of coverage. It feels sturdy. Um, I feel safe wearing it. And that's, that's the main reason that I, I chose the helmet. Awesome. Um, you know, just looking at it and like I'm sure Preston will put up here on B-roll for people to, you know, to check out and see the awesome details. Like the lines are really clean. Like it's got a nice rounded effect, mm -hmm. some nice vent holes here, you know, in the rear for, you know, air to kind of come through and pass through the helmet and kind of, you know, expel that heat uh, going down a nice camera mount at the top. Um, but I know we have the full 10 now, you know, mm -hmm. which is like the kind of the upgraded model. Um, it looks like they've added a little bit more ventilation here. Mm -hmm. um, probably people were saying they needed a little bit more. Um, anything else you want to add about, you know, the full 10 and like things that you possibly know are there um, that kind of build from the full nine and, you know, what it offers for people as like a good choice. Yeah. So one of the things that they updated on the full 10 is they added the spherical uh, system, which is similar to MIPS where you have that rotational deflection um, if you do hit the ground and like you said they added more ventilation and they also have a breakaway visor and a, a magnetic strap to keep it from flapping around um, so let's just talk about this real quick with breakaway visors like mm -hmm. what is the purpose of a breakaway visor for maybe someone that doesn't understand why there's this idea of your visor breaking away um, on a downhill helmet, right? So what is the purpose of that? Yeah, so basically the reason that you want your visor to break away when you crash is if you hit your head from the side, you don't want that visor twisting your head around. You just want that thing to break free so that you're not putting any extra pressure on your neck or your head uh, in the event of a crash. Awesome, yeah, so I mean, great choices. I love the way Bells fit. Um, I ride a Bell half shell. Um, for trail riding and stuff. It's really light. It feels good. I know that they're a very good company. Like you said, they base a lot of their stuff off of, you know, Moto as well. Mm -hmm. So you're getting, you know, a much higher standard when it comes to safety ratings and things like that with the Bell. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to add about the Bell or should we keep going down the list? Uh, yeah, um, both of these helmets are super comfortable when I tried them on. Um, even the full nine, a lot of people seem to think it, it looks a little bulky or it might not ventilate too well, but from experience, it's it's not bulky at all. It's actually surprisingly light. Me and Preston both noticed that earlier. And uh, the ventilation isn't too bad on it. I think if you really want a, a sturdy, secure helmet, you can't go wrong with the Bell. Awesome. Um, next, why don't we jump into Fox? I know this is, say, a favorite, you know, for Preston here. He loves a Fox. He rides Fox, you know, pretty thoroughly. Uh, this year, I'll be riding Fox at the park. Um, so I'm kind of excited about that. Um, but let's get into the Rampage uh, Carbon Pro. And this is a pretty high-end helmet here that Fox has to offer when it comes to downhill. Um, equipped with MIPS, uh, it's a full carbon shell, which is nice, so you're getting a little bit lighter weight here. Um, it comes in at 1,210 grams. Um, so kind of the heavier end, but again, with downhill, you know, this is kind of what we expect here. 
Um, it's got a dual density uh, Verisorb uh, EPS in there. So, I mean, that's giving you both a reduced weight and typical, you know, foam density when it comes to downhill helmets, but also, you know, an upper end when it comes to safety features to be full downhill rated for you and things like that. Um, it also has 17 vents, which is awesome. It's got a magnetic uh, detachable or breakaway visor, which is what we just talked about is really awesome. But I think for me, the biggest standout about it is that ventilation, mm -hmm. right? We ride here in Big Bear, and although it's cooler, when you're up in elevation with that sun, like it gets hot quick, right? Yep. So even just going downhill, having that ventilation just kind of gives you that extra cooling airflow. I don't know if you've ever ridden the Rampage or if you have anything to add about the Rampage. Uh, I haven't gotten the chance to ride it yet. It's definitely one that I want to try out. Um, I'd say Fox definitely prioritized ventilation, especially for a full DH helmet. It's probably one of the most ventilated helmets out there for its category. Um, and obviously it's, it's still a very protective helmet. Uh, the name Rampage implies, you know, it's, it's what the riders choose out there in the desert. So I think it's a great helmet, especially if you live in a warmer climate and you need that ventilation, but you still want the full protection. Uh, I think it's a good way to go. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, they've also added the removable ecstatic antimicrobial liner. So if you run hot, you need ventilation and you want to make sure those microbes aren't build, building up. I mean, it might be the helmet for you. Um, next up, let's go, you want to go the TLD D4? Yeah. All right. Um, what are your thoughts on that as like a full downhill helmet? Uh, yeah, it's a great helmet. Uh, Trulli's been making uh, great downhill helmets for years. The, the D3 was around for a super long time. The D4 kind of just improves on that. Um, it's very similar classic lines. Um, I think it's the same thing as the trend has been. They just add a little bit more ventilation, uh, reduce that weight a little bit but uh, it's the great helmet it's always been, just a little bit better. Yeah, um, so again, it's equipped with MIPS. Uh, we got 16 vents on this where, you know, the Rampage had 17 vents, so a little less ventilation, but still plenty of ventilation going through the helmet. Uh, let's see what else we got on here. It's a full carbon again, so that's nice. You know, that full carbon's, you know, real durable. Um, has a snap-in Coolmax and Drylex uh, moisture wicking liner. So we're getting that kind of liner that you can remove, keep clean, you mm. know, when you're out there sweating. Um, it's coming in at 1,000 grams. So it's about 200 grams less uh, than, say, the Rampage. So if weight is an issue for you, you're going to be able to save some weight by going with the D4 if that's kind of your thing. Um, and again, like a lot of these downhill helmets, it goes through numerous safety tests. And, you know, the, the D4 has passed a lot of them. Um, be sure you can check out the details on our website for each of those. I'm not going to name them off here, but plenty of you know safety certifications to keep your head uh, going, you know, pretty good. Um, anything else on the D4? Um, it, I would just say it's kind of a if you're looking for something a little bit in between, maybe the Bell and the Fox. I'd say it's a little bit slimmer profile than the Bell, but um, it's a little bit more coverage than a Fox, so it's it's a good choice. All right, so last up, um, I just wanted to cut in here real quick and go over the Specialized Dissident 2 uh, to kind of round out uh, downhill helmets in this category. Um, the Dissident 2 is pretty cool because it was collaborated with, with uh, Loic Bruni and Finn Isles uh, with Specialized to create a helmet really, really specifically organized around fast downhill racing. Um, which maybe you're not a downhill racer, but if it's meant for downhill racing, it's probably gonna keep your head pretty safe. Um, again, it's got MIPS Evolve technology, um, which is to help reduce rotational forces um, in the event of a crash and things like that. It's got maximized airflow, similar to like the Bells, where it's meant to exhaust out hot air from the rear vents um, as cool air is coming in from the front of the helmet. Um, it's a full carbon fiber outer shell um, but it's a triple layer helmet in which they've done this for a means of reducing weight. So out of our downhill helmets, um, the Dissident 2 actually comes in at probably the lowest when it comes to weight at 940 grams. So if you're looking for a little bit you know, less weight, the Dissident 2 is probably that. Um, also, I think it looks really nice. Like it's really clean. Um, I like the shape of it. Um, it's got you know, your typical Ionic Plus fabric, so it's antimicrobial and all those great things that downhill helmets tend to offer. Um, so that's the Dissident 2. Uh, I think it's a pretty rad helmet, but uh, let's cap that off there at downhill and let's jump in down into like our Enduro class um, and move into like helmets that you can actually pedal in um, and even a little bit lighter weight and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm.
All right, so moving you know away from downhill helmets uh, and do a little bit lesser weight, I don't wanna say less safety, but not so much specifically focused helmets on one really serious classification. Um, let's move into like more of the enduro focus, which is kind of downhill, more race oriented, but still able to pedal in it. You're gonna get a little more ventilation, things like that. Um, Fox's Pro Frame RS, which just came out, you know, 2022 um, and continues to grow in 2023 with different colorways and different options and things like that. Um, I think is a great helmet. Uh, the one you're holding is actually gonna be the helmet I ride this year uh, at park for the most of the time until I decide to go a full downhill helmet. But you know, Fox really markets this helmet as being like downhill, you know, worthy, downhill certified. Um, but just immediately you can see with this helmet, a ton of ventilation, like the entire chin bar here is basically hollow, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just like a skeletal frame. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, what do you think about this? I know you've been around since we got these and yeah. with the launch of these and stuff, and they've been a pretty hot ticket here for us at Jensen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Fox is kind of one of the first brands to bridge the gap between a full downhill helmet and then maybe some of the more lighter weight helmets with the chin bar. This is more, more close to a downhill helmet, but you still have a ton of the breathability. Uh, you have a lightweight. This is something that you're gonna be able to pedal in no problem. Um, I think that's why it's optimal for enduro because they're pedaling up to the top of their stages, but the stuff that they're riding is just as gnarly as a lot of, a lot of the downhill courses. So um, I don't think you're really compromising too much safety, but it's definitely going to get a lot of benefit on those climbs or anywhere that you have to pedal. So yeah, yeah. And, you know, speaking of lightweight, I mean coming into 820 grams in size medium, mm -hmm. you know that's a huge reduction in weight. Yeah. Especially when you know you're thinking about okay, I gotta wear this for pedaling up if mm -hmm. I am looking to do my first enduro races for the year, or what have you. I also think with the Pro Frame RS, it comes with a lot of cool features that a lot of the helmets aren't really bringing to the table yet. You know, one being like the Boa Fit system. I think that's a pretty neat system. Um, it really snugs it onto your head, but you can kind of feel with that MIPS uh, Integra split, like you can feel a good rotational protection there. But where the the helmet kind of sits loose but at the same time you feel a safety of like snug fit when it's mm -hmm. on your head kind of thing i know preston rides this is preston's actual pro frame rs here he loves riding this thing as well um but again adjustable visor as you can see it's ventilated just all over the entire thing uh antimicrobial liner um it's got a fid lock for attachment which is you know a big deal that we see the difference here to point out between a downhill helmet and going into something like an enduro helmet is we're not getting that d-ring closure for example, like you get on a downhill helmet, which you're gonna get, it's like almost super moto oriented. You're getting a full, you know, a lot of these are titanium or steel D-ring closures like a moto helmet. These enduro helmets and more pedal friendly helmets are you gonna get things like Fidlock um, and things like that, which I like Fidlock, it's quick, it's easy, um, new age technology stuff. Um, also has a really cool mount that comes with the ProFrame RS. So if you're into, you know, gaining your own GoPro footage and that kind of thing, the mount's pretty cool mm -hmm. on that sense as well. Uh, anything else you want to add to this? Yeah, just for all these Enduro hel helmets in general, you get a lot of the benefits and features of the lighter weight helmets, uh, like the Fidlock and the adjustability. Uh, but you do get more protection closer to a downhill helmet. Awesome. So uh, next, why don't you grab that uh, TLD stage right there? I think that's the next, you know, good one to look at moving in, you know, after the Pro Frame RS. Um, and this is TLD stage, so this is kind of like the step down from the D4, going into more of your enduro focus and your race oriented in that sense, a little more pedal friendly. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, a lot of ventilation there. Um, again, you know, we're seeing much more ventilation, which you know turns around and sheds weight in that sense. So that's a dual density uh, EPS foam. It's cold molded. Um, for like a high speed and low, low speed impact forces. Mm -hmm. um, so they're still thinking about safety ratings and things like that. It has MIPS, of course. Um, it's got 11 intake and 14 exhaust ports. So a lot of air coming in and a lot of air, you know, coming out to kind of keep you, you know, during those pedals nice and cool down. You're not, you know, draining all your sweat and, and dead by the time you get to the top, you're still able to, you know, be pretty ready to go down. Um, 
and a lot of certifications as well on the stage. Um, Downhill certified, there's a whole bunch of them. We list those on our website as well. So if you're looking to see exactly, you know, what certifications any of these helmets have, we make sure to list those on all the product pages um, to keep you informed. Um, and surprisingly, that TLD stage right there comes in at 690 grams in the medium large yeah. size. So like just super lightweight. Yeah, this thing's super lightweight. And I also noticed the chin bar on this thing is pretty beefy. It doesn't look like it's like it's gonna break off. It actually looks, you know, just as beefy as some of the downhill helmets. It just does have more of that ventilation. But as you can see, it's it's not super thin. It's definitely got the EPS foam in there. Um, I'd say this helmet, you know, is, is still very protective even though it, it comes in at such a light weight. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, why don't we move into next that Endura fi uh, MT500 II. Uh, and that's new for 2023. Uh, we first saw these uh, at Sea Otter this year in 2023 and we're immediately like blown away at how nice they look. Super lightweight. Um, I don't know, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, just picking this up, I noticed this thing is very lightweight. Um, it's also got the choroid technology, which is basically it has all these hollow spaces, but these tubes are allowed to, to crush on impact. So it creates a super light uh, way of protecting your head and it's also, you know, extremely efficient in doing so. Yeah, I mean, uh, to me, it kind of reminds of like a beehive or like honeycomb or like someone glued a bunch of straws together. Um, but basically the technology behind, the, behind this choroid, um, which has been displayed in the Smith main line, which we'll get into here in a few, um, but it's one of the most advanced technologies for impact resistance. Basically that honeycomb or those straws completely crush upon impact and absorb all the energy before it gets to your head um, to just keep you extra safe. And it's super lightweight. Um, so that's really cool. That comes in at 640 grams in the medium large size. So, you know, super lightweight, really breathable. Um, it's got MIPS, um, it's goggle compatible, um, downhill certified, um, basically all the things you need uh, if you're looking for more of a pedal worthy oriented uh, full face helmet. Um, so we'll keep moving on to some of our favorites here. Um, why don't we grab, what do you want to grab? Let's grab the Specialized Gambit up there. All yeah, right. that one's pretty cool. Now this one, I'm sure you've seen in some of our videos when we recently did the SB160 video with Kyle here at Jensen. He's riding that Specialized Gambit helmet. He loves it as a pedal worthy helmet. It is super lightweight. I mean, it, it breathes well. It doesn't have so many vents right away that you kind of see, but it's just sleek and it fits really, really nicely um, with that specialized feel. So it's an all carbon shell, which is pretty nice. Um, if you, you know, really want carbon, it's got that kind of polished carbon look on the bottom half uh, in this black colorway, which is pretty cool. Um, and the small size, it comes in at 595 grams uh, with the large being at 730. So still super lightweight on there. Um, this one is Angie Sensor compatible. Um, anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, this thing is extremely lightweight. It's probably one of the lightest ones that we have here. And I also noticed that the branding isn't super loud on it. I know a lot of people tend to shy away from Specialized because they think of it as a bike specific brand. But I mean, I would be happy, you know, wearing this on any bike. Um, it's yeah. a great looking helmet. It's, it's pretty understated looking. Um, the carbon looks awesome. Yeah, it does. I love that smooth carbon look. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's got great protection as well. It's also got that uh, SBC, SBC fit, which also offers like an up and down occipital adjustment and such as well. So it's really meant to give you the absolute like best fit it po possibly can onto your head and give you that comfort when you're out there riding. Um, so last, when it comes to these more like enduro pedal friendly helmets is the Smith Mainline, mm -hmm. um, which we actually did an entire video specifically <clears throat> on that one. Uh, with Kevin, one of our uh, affiliate and ambassador managers here at Jensen. Um, he loves this helmet. This is his helmet of choice. Um, so if you're looking for a full overview on that helmet, I'd highly recommend check out that video where we go over every specific detail. But to kind of just go over some of them, um, I mean, what is your initial thoughts on that helmet? Yeah, it's super light, um, pretty close to like the Enduro or the Specialized, but I think it might just be a little bit beefier. Mm -hmm. And I really like that. Uh, it's got a super great finish and it also does have that choroid technology. Um, yeah, it's, it seems like a great helmet. I really like the way it looks and how it feels. What's cool though too is uh, 
I think they're trying to branch that uh, or bridge that gap between downhill and pedal worthy helmets because they keep the D ring fastener on there so it doesn't have fid lock or anything like that. It's, it's maintaining that D ring fastener. So if that's a big safety thing you're looking for when it comes to you know picking your full face helmet, the D ring fastener is on that Smith Mayline helmet. Um, of course, it has MIPS, it has the choroid like you talked about, which is you know really good new age technology for safety, um, and definitely just a pedal-worthy helmet. It's you know very lightweight. Uh, it's got 21 vents on it, so it's gonna be real ventilated and keep you cool. Um, yeah, so I think that kind of rounds out you know the majority of the full-face helmets we picked. Um, we have one left. Uh, now this is kind of in a category uh, within itself, uh, and this is the Bell Super Air R. Uh, if you wanna grab that one down there on the end. Now this kind of bridges a lot of different gaps here. Um, but as you can see, it is a full face helmet in that sense, but it also, you can remove that chin bar and have a half shell just when you're out there trail riding, or if you wanna just keep that, you know, uh, chin bar in your bag till you get to the top when you're pedaling, throw it on. It is downhill certified, um, super lightweight, super comfortable. So you're getting kind of two helmets in one. Now, I would classify this as this isn't the helmet you'd want if you're looking to do a ton of laps, you're getting a season pass at the bike park and you're looking to, you know, you get pretty gnarly, you're riding double blacks, whatever. That's kind of the helmet you want where maybe you do a couple laps or you find yourself riding, you know, decent trails, but you know, every once in a while you go out and hit some pretty gnarly, uh, super steep trails. It's good to have that, you know, attachable chin bar with the downhill certification to kind of keep you going. Um, I don't know if you've ridden one of those, Alex, or anything, that's my personal <laughs> one. I really enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't ridden one of these, but I think it's great for someone that doesn't want to fully commit to riding bike parks all the time. Uh, maybe you're someone who likes to shuttle yourself up to a lot of trails where you have to pedal. Um, and maybe you want to take a couple bike park laps here and there. Um, I think it's a good option. It's definitely a lot more protection than just your traditional half shell. So if you want something, you know, to be more versatile and you don't want to just commit to only riding downhill stuff, I think it's a great option. Absolutely, yeah. So it comes with a camera mount. Um, if you're looking to film yourself again, I know GoPros and cell footage is the thing. Uh, adjustable visor. Uh, it's got a nice sweat guide. So, you know, if you drip a ton of sweat, it'll guide that sweat right from your eyes. Um, apparently what I'm saying right now is boring our cameraman. He just yawned big time behind the camera. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, great helmet if you're looking for that one helmet to rule them all, but not be specific to one specific style of writing. Um, but I wouldn't be using it to send the, you know, the biggest stuff, but it does give you a little peace of mind if you're looking to ride a little bit of steep stuff and then switch to a half shell when you're not. Um, so that basically wraps up you know, all of the full face helmets that we've kind of picked for 2023 that you should be considering when it comes to the bike park or if you're looking to move into just wearing a full face because you're riding steeper terrain um, and you're still looking to pedal, et cetera. Uh, Maybe we didn't pick a helmet that you know you really swear by and you think that's the helmet of choice. Leave a comment down below. We're happy to hear about it. We wanna hear your tips. Other people in our community love to hear our customers' tips and tricks. So even if you leave a review on the website, it's the same thing. People are actually reading those. They love your opinions and to hear those great things. Is there anything you wanted to add here? Uh, yeah, I mean, we basically wanted to make this video because bike park season's coming up and uh, we're gonna be hitting the bike park uh, in about a week, so. Just wanted to go over these options for everybody and to hope, hopefully you get the right helmet for you. Um, and with that, keep pedaling. And if you're not looking to pedal and you're going full downhill, just keep sending park laps.